Wonder Woman 84 is the perfect movie for the internal consistency versus emotional resonance debate in film because it is so unconcerned with internal logic and chases emotional resonance at every turn. She, uh, she raped a guy, Jonathan. Hello. <laughs> I love how Pedro Pascal lied and said that his character had nothing to do with Donald Trump. I'm so sure. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. I'm Ethan Van Skyver. I just finished watching Wonder Woman 84. It is a mess. Uh, it's got a message at the core. I mean, this is the message of Wonder Woman 1984. You're not going to believe this. Uh, don't wish for anything. Don't have any fantasies. Uh, don't ever desire anything at all because it could lead to nuclear Armageddon. This film is an absolute mess. And I wanted to like it. I went into this film having enjoyed Wonder Woman, uh, the first film, thinking Patty Jenkins was more than a one-hit wonder. I'm afraid she might just be a one-hit wonder because uh, this movie is a disaster. I went into this uh, expecting it uh, to have a high degree of quality and fun and lightheartedness. I thought Gal Gadot would be able to carry this film, and she did great. Gal Gadot did the best that she could, looking beautiful, being Wonder Woman, having grace. Uh, and also, my friend Jeff Johns co-wrote it, so I'm already kind of biased towards liking it. Okay, I wanted to like it, and I wanted to be able to report back to you guys that it was not a painful experience, that I didn't suffer uh, through agony while watching this film, but I'm afraid I cannot report that. I had to take a couple of breaks. I had to pause it. I had to go collect myself. I had to go think about things. I had to go examine the world out there and wonder if... Uh, Hollywood was still capable of making a movie uh, that was pure, uh, that was centered, that was good and wholesome. Uh, and I'm afraid that they, uh, I have my doubts. I, I, I managed to finish it and I'm here to report to you this is, uh, this is crap, okay? This is crap. Uh, so the center of the movie, the, uh, the, the item in question, the uh, MacGuffin, as Hitchcock would have said, is a kind of a monkey's paw. It's actually referred to by Wonder Woman as a monkey's paw, but it's, it's a crystal. It's from Satan. Wonder Woman doesn't actually uh, come out and say that this thing is a satanic artifact, but she, sort of, she says, oh, it's from the God of Lies. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that's the devil. Uh, those people who make wishes on this, uh, on this monkey's paw item have their wishes fulfilled but then of course there's an unintended consequence like something that is very important to them also disappears slowly uh, with uh, the fulfillment of their wish now Wonder Woman uh, makes a wish that she can have Steve Trevor back and she doesn't even get Steve Trevor back this is the weirdest part of this movie why couldn't the monkey's paw just bring back Steve Trevor uh, that would have been fine. And then, you know, the cost of that was, of course, Wonder Woman's powers and a swipe from Superman 2. Now, this movie borrows a lot uh, from Richard Donner's Superman 2, um, the, the Richard Donner version, which is no surprise because, of course, Jeff Johns is writing it and he used to be an assistant to Richard Donner. Uh, so it borrows a lot from that movie. Instead, Steve Trevor takes over, he shows up as somebody else, like in somebody else's body. Uh, and convinces Wonder Woman very quickly uh, that he is actually Steve Trevor in there in the body of someone else. Now, what happened to the dude uh, that, <laughs> that used to inhabit that body? I guess we murdered him. Uh, I guess that is... I, well, I'd like to know where he went. Where did he go? Uh, this movie never stops. Wonder Woman never stops to really ask that question. Steve Trevor never stops to ask that question. Instead, they go through his closet and have a funny uh, waka 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 sequence of, look at my 80s wardrobe. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, very, very strange. Uh, I Again, I do not know. I don't know why Steve Trevor couldn't just come back in this magical... Uh, wish fulfillment world uh, scenario where magical things happen. I mean, walls grow up out of nowhere. Uh, you know, sure, uh, there there should be. It should have been easy for that. I don't know why did they do this. And I wanna I wanna actually you know ask these uh, these filmmakers why make this very very strange choice that basically leads Wonder Woman to have I'm sorry sexual intercourse uh, with a person's body without his permission. Uh, you would think that that would be a no-no, but this movie has all kinds of weird issues with rape in it. Uh, I will say this also. Uh, Barbara Minerva, uh, whose 
one crime in this movie is that she wishes, without knowing that there was a wish fulfillment scenario going on, that she could have the grace, the poise, the self-confidence of Diana Prince, who she works with. She doesn't know that Diana Prince is Wonder Woman, and suddenly she's gifted with strength and super speed and all of Wonder Woman's superpowers. Uh, now, earlier in the film, when she's walking home, a guy tries to sexually assault her. Uh, now that she's got these powers, she sees the guy again, and she proceeds to beat the living F out of him. Now, this is supposed to be this moment in which a villain is supposed to, you know, arrive. Okay, like this is this is the turn. This is where uh, a character turns towards evil, right? But what exactly is so wrong with beating the living F out of uh, somebody who apparently assaults women and tried to assault her. Uh, I put it to you that most of us are kind of looking at this and going, yeah, that this kind of feels okay. She should be beating up this guy. She should be beating him down. She doesn't kill him, uh, but she certainly does uh, grind his face into the dirt and throw him into the side of a van that, interestingly enough, has a picture of a pig on it uh, and uh, kicks him into the ground. And then here comes a little, like a black homeless guy who knows Barbara. And he says, Barbara, what are you doing? Now, um, okay, uh, yeah, what, what are you doing? Barbara could have said anything to him, like, shut up, this guy is a rapist. Barbara could have said, uh, instead she just kind of said, mind your own business and walks away, right? Uh, she could have killed the homeless black guy. Uh, why not? Why not say, mind your own, this is what you get for not minding your own business, and then backhanding him. Uh, breaking his neck or something like that. And that would have been the moment where Barbara Minerva becomes evil, right? Uh, but there's nothing inherently evil about what she was doing. Uh, and uh, she just said, mind your own business to this guy. By the way, black homeless guy, we never see him again. He never shows up in the movie again. Uh, one wonders what his wish might have been. We don't care. We only care about the wishes uh, of the very beautiful and attractive uh, in this movie. And, uh, and that's it. Just a very, very strange thing. Like, we're meant to go, I guess we're meant to go, that's wrong that you're beating the crap out of your rapist. Uh, and that's why she became a villain. But is that the attitude of the movie or the filmmakers? Boy, is it weird. It's just, it's so weird uh, all through this. And their treatment of President Reagan, it has to be seen to be believed. Uh, it is incredibly incredibly stupid maxwell lord shows up in the oval office president reagan they never say it's president reagan but clearly it's president reagan it's 1984 the actor portraying him looks nothing like him uh and maxwell lord asks him what he wishes for now my guess is that if you actually asked president ronald reagan in 1984 what he wished for i think he would have wished that jack benny was alive again uh, <laughs> i think he would have made a wish kind of like that to hang out with his friends who he'd lost uh, or something like that, or maybe world peace. Uh, instead, this Reagan character, uh, a caricature, a leftist caricature of one of the greatest presidents uh, of the 20th century, says, I wish I had more nukes, and I wish that there were, they were closer to the Soviet Union. Uh, you dummies, you don't think that President Reagan uh, knew what he was doing when it came to uh, nuclear proliferation and the, the arms race? You'd think that if the United States of America wanted more nukes, we couldn't have them? Uh, you think that we didn't learn anything or the world didn't learn anything from the Cuban Missile Crisis? If we wanted to put more nukes near Russia, we certainly would, and we would know what the end result of that would be. Uh, that would be scaring the hell uh, out of Gorbachev, and then we'd certainly be in some kind of uh, scenario uh, where we'd be demanding each other stand down, and we'd have to humiliatingly remove our missiles. Uh, but whoever wrote this is like Reagan's deepest desire was for more nuclear missiles and to just place them closer to Russia. In fact, what Reagan was doing was he was working on a plan, uh, the Star Wars plan to sort of psych the Soviet Union out saying, look, we can actually we don't need more missiles. We'll just make your missiles uh, incapable of uh, reaching us. And that's uh, that was his that was his strategy. It wasn't more, more, more. It was actually let's see what we can do about making uh, these missiles ineffective. Absolutely horrifyingly stupid. I, you know, the worst part of this movie to me uh, was Diana's treatment of Barbara. Okay, so Barbara becomes an apex predator. That's her final wish. She wants to be, uh, you know, unstoppable and nothing like Wonder Woman, and that's fine. Uh, 
Uh, but what brought her to this in the first place? What brought her to this was that she was mousy and unattractive, and her one wish was to be more like Diana in the sense that Diana had poise and confidence and all of the things that you know Barbara wished that she was gifted with. Uh, and the most horrifying scene in this for me, in which a lesson could have been taught uh, to young ladies uh, and wasn't, was completely just missed, uh, and the wrong message was sent. Wonder Woman is drowning Barbara Minerva under the under the water and saying, "Renounce your wish. Renounce your wish uh, to be more like me, more graceful, more self confident. Renounce it." Uh, and you know, Barbara's never no. Okay, uh, Wonder Woman could have said to her, "You don't have to be." an apex predator you don't have to have perfect bone structure you don't have to look like me in order to feel like me and be graceful and be self-confident and be uh the best you that you can possibly be and that would have been a way better message instead she chokes her and electrocutes her how dare you know your place you can never be <laughs> you can never be diana friends uh, bizarre absolutely bizarre uh, amoral. I, I I don't know what to say. Jeff Johns, what are you doing? And by the way, what was the whole thing at the beginning anyway? See, this is why you know it is. Uh, this movie was written and rewritten over and over and over again. Uh, because what was the message about not cheating? At the, 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 I think that the movie was supposed to be about playing by the rules in order to win. Your time will come when you you know, and as long as you play by the rules, you can't cheat. Um, where did that go? It just seems like that part was kept in the movie and then everything else after it was rewritten and they kept that whole uh, Themyscira uh, scene with young Diana. Uh, this movie was, it felt to me like the Green Lantern movie. And I hate to say that, I really do. It felt like, it felt like the Green Lantern movie in the fact that it was disjointed, in the fact that its message was wrong, the feel was wrong. Uh, it felt like... Uh, Batman and Robin uh, or a Joel Schumacher Batman movie with the zaniness of the backdrop in which the, the world in which uh, the beautiful Wonder Woman uh, must inhabit. Uh, it felt like Superman 2 in many places, but you know, with the, with the nuclear Armageddon happening and it's just lack of impact on uh, me, the viewer, you know, a little bit like Superman 4 in its execution. This was not a good movie. Uh, and I wanted it to be. I really did want it to be. Uh, but it wasn't a good movie. And yet, I'm still seeing SJWs out there trying to protect this movie. Uh, I don't know why. This movie had many opportunities to actually say what SJWs like to say. Punch a Nazi, punch a rapist. No, evidently not. Mind your own business. And in fact, punching your rapist uh, turns you into a supervillain. Uh, turns you into somebody that Wonder Woman, who is objectively righteous, must put a stop to. Uh, that's strange. That's a very strange message for SJWs. Um, but I will say that this movie comes down way too hard on the patriarchy. Every single man in this movie is catcalling the women, sexually harassing them, or they are an idiot. Uh, they are power mad. Except for the end of the movie, except for Steve Trevor, obviously. Steve Trevor is the perfect man, the one man in uh, a, a century uh, who's a decent human being. And that is why Diana loves him. Uh, until the end of the movie, when uh, the man who Steve Trevor formerly inhabited uh, happens to have a chance encounter with Wonder Woman out in the snow. He's wearing his scarf, uh, the scarf that they previously made fun of when they were uh, they broke into his house and invaded his wardrobe. Uh, and she says she compliments him on his outfit, and he says, uh, "Hey, thanks. Uh, you made my day. I guess I'll see you around." And uh, then he leaves. And so that is the ideal man uh, in in this world. That is that is what they're trying to say. Uh, this guy was probably gay. That would have been better if like he'd actually. That would have been a better punchline uh, if this guy had said to her, "Thanks, my boyfriend really likes it too." Uh, that would have been a, a fantastic punchline. But instead, this man inexplicably. Uh, who is single, we've seen his apartment, uh, he just says, hey, thanks, see you around, and walks away from one of the most beautiful women 
uh, who's ever lived doesn't ask her to dinner, doesn't ask her to coffee, doesn't do anything like that, just says, hey, see ya, uh, and leaves. And Wonder Woman looks up at the sky and goes, so many things. So, so many things. And then the credits roll. Uh, what a disaster. What a weird movie. I, I don't know how you guys felt about it. You let me know in the comments below. Uh, maybe you picked up some things that I didn't about this movie, but uh, I, uh, I'm ashamed of everyone. I'm ashamed of everyone involved. Uh, what a nightmare. This is They just killed the Wonder Woman franchise. And Patty Jenkins is destined... She's supposed to be working on a new Star Wars series, too, for Disney+. Plus. At first, I was pretty excited about that. Now I'm dreading it. Uh, that is going to be a, that's going to be a disaster too. Let me know in the comments what you think, uh, and please like, share, subscribe to this channel if you like this content. Uh, watch a few more of my videos. Subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and uh, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye bye. New from all caps comics, Snowman: A Cold Day in Hell. The victim of a genocidal massacre has somehow returned from the dead and is carving a path of death across the heart of America. Driven by the echoes of silent screams, this is the story of a man once known as Black Dog, the one now forever known as the Snowman. Snowman, a cold day in hell, back it today, only on Indiegogo. Hey, I got a P.O. Box. Want to send me some mail? Send it to Ethan Van Skyver, P.O. Box 607, Marlton, New Jersey, 08053. And I'll probably open it up on the live stream. Thanks very much, everyone. Hey, you want to follow me on Twitter? Are you sure? Well, if so, I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. That's at Ethan Van Skyver. See you there.